Our next topic is permutations and combinations. Before we go into permutations and combinations proper, let's deal with a very important idea. It's called the multiplication principle. In some books, uh, it's referred to as the counting principle. Okay, a lot of words here. Let's get through the words first. Just bear with me. If a task can be carried out in m ways and for each of these m ways a second task can be carried out in n ways let me go through that again yeah? if a task can be carried out in m ways and for each very important for each of these m ways a second task can be carried out in n ways then the number of ways in which the whole process or successive task can be carried out is equals to m times n. So if something can be done in m ways for each of these m ways something else can be done in n ways then the total number of ways the whole thing can be accomplished will be equal to m times n. Okay? So you can extend this if for each of these n ways that is the second task just now something else can be done in p ways then the whole process can now be done in m times n times p ways so let's give these some numbers okay i want to fly from a city in the us to another city in the us so i want to fly from detroit to atlanta now i have uh, three helicopters i'm going to refer to it as helis and two pilots yeah i can choose uh, any of the three helicopters and any of the two pilots and I want to get from Detroit to Atlanta so in how many ways can I do this okay so I can take heli 1 and pilot 1 or I can take heli 2 and pilot 2 or I can take heli 3 and pilot 1 so if you look at it I can get from uh, Detroit to Atlanta in how many ways? Yes. In six ways. So I have listed all the six possible ways here and uh, you can go through it. So how do I get this six? The first task I can accomplish in three ways either H1, H2 or H3 and the second task I can carry out in two ways P1 or P2. So three times two I have six ways on how I can get uh, from Detroit to Atlanta. Uh, note that we are dealing with independent successive tasks. Let's look at an example. If I'm going to have lunch, then do some shopping before going sightseeing. That is, lunch first, then shop, then sightsee. Uh, there are four possible restaurants that I can visit six shopping centers I can go to and three tourist attractions I can visit in how many ways can I do all three so basically the question you can think about it as how many possibilities are there so the first thing can be done in let's look at this slowly uh, I have a choice among four restaurants so the first thing can be done in four ways and the second task which is sightseeing can be done in six ways and uh, the last task which is uh, going to some tourist attractions can be done in three ways so four times six times three I have 72 ways in which I can do those successive tasks let's look at a different example I like you to read the question and appreciate the difference between what we did earlier and what we have here. Michael visits a computer shop to buy a laptop. Uh, he wants to buy a laptop which means only one computer and uh, there are nine IBM models, there are seven Acer models and two Fujitsu models. How many choices does Michael have? So let's look at uh, the solution. Michael can choose only one. Okay, 
so he can choose one of the models and how many choices does he have he has nine IBM models from which to choose from seven Acer models and two Fujitsu models but he can only buy one so he has got 18 choices Michael has 18 choices that is 9 IBM models, 7 Acer models and 2 Fujitsu models but unfortunately he can only buy one so he has to make a choice among 18 choices okay so what I'm trying to impress upon you is if he buys an IBM model he cannot buy an Acer he cannot buy a Fujitsu so when you have a situation like this we refer to these as a mutually exclusive set of possibilities that means if you do one you cannot do the other for mutually exclusive ways to accomplish something we have to add okay we have to add so I added 9 plus 7 plus 2 I've got 18 choices please bear this in mind let's move on to permutations permutations are also known as arrangements in our course we will only be dealing with permutations or arrangements in a straight line okay so when you go into A levels and college level statistics courses you'll be dealing with different types of permutations for example permutations in a circle uh, that is how you arrange people around a circle or arrangements around a table and so on so right now we'll stick to arrangements in a straight line let's look at three objects a B and C they're all different what we are going to do is we are going to consider all the possible arrangements taking all three at a time for example we can have in our set of permutations ABC okay we can have ACB we can have BAC we can have BCA CAB and CBA so what we have done is we have arranged three objects taking all three at the same time and what we have found is we have six such permutations or arrangements which are possible okay one very important thing to note is that in permutations order is important okay you notice the same three objects are involved but their position as far as the arrangement is concerned is different in all six for example uh, in BAC and BCA you can see that the C and A they are in different positions okay here A is in the middle here C is in the middle so that's what I mean by in permutations order is important it's a very important idea now what happens if you take two at a time and arrange so if you take two at a time you will get AB, BA, AC, CA, BC and CB. You also get six permutations or arrangements if you take two objects from three and arrange them in a line. Okay? Now, let's look at a formula. Okay? the number of permutations of a group of n distinct distinct means different objects taken r at a time look we are dealing with n distinct objects we are taking r at a time remember just now we had three objects and we took three at a time and we also had three objects we took two at a time so these are the values of R and this is the value of N this is also the value of N okay so the formula says that the number of such permutations of N objects taken R at a time is NPR okay 
Now, of course, R has to be between 1 and N. And N, P, R, this is available on your calculator. Okay? This is available on the calculator. P stands for permute. And uh, we will work out some of these values on the calculator. Let's move on. Okay, in our first example, as I said, we had uh, three objects, A, B, and C. So, N was 3, and R was 3, because we took all three and arranged them to get 6. And if you plug this into the calculator, 3, P, 3, you will get 6. And your second example, we had three objects, and we arranged two at a time, like A, B, B, A, A, C, C, A, and all those stuff. And we had N equals to 3, and R equals to 2. If you plug it into your calculator, 3, P, 2, you will also get 6. Let's look at some mathematics before we go any further. 3 factorial. Yeah? This symbol here, an exclamation mark, is known as factorial in mathematics. Yeah? So, what is 3 factorial? I chose 3 factorial just to uh, give you an idea on how to work this. Okay, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. The value is 6. This is also available on your calculator. You can plug in 3 factorial and the calculator will give you 6. But I like you to know what it means. Yeah? 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1 and 4 factorial will be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 which gives you 24 and therefore n factorial will be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 all the way right up to 1. So get the idea it's easier to learn it if you look at some numbers like 3 factorial, 4 factorial, 5 factorial and so on. It's good that you remember this n factorial thing in case you need to take a scholarship exam and you're not allowed a calculator so at least you know how to work out 4 factorial. Next. 0 factorial is defined as 1. Okay, 0 factorial is defined as 1. The formula for NPR, the value of which I said you can easily get on a calculator, is N factorial over N minus R factorial. And this formula, like I said, it's quite useful for you as you go into higher levels of mathematics. So using the formula, you can work out 6p2 so it will be 6 factorial over 6 minus 2 factorial which gives you 6 factorial over 4 factorial and you know how to work factorials now 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 you can get these numbers on the calculator you work it and you will get 30 and just to drive home the point, 7p5 will be 7 factorial over 2 factorial because this will be n minus r which will be 7 minus 5 factorial so 7 factorial over 2 factorial you work it and you will get 2520